The shooter is dead. Two officers hurt. Investigators say one of them shot at nearly point blank range. He's recovering from surgery tonight. Gunfire rings out again in South St. Pete, a neighborhood that's hurting after yet another shooting. Investigators trying to figure out why and how it took a turn for the worst. To give you an idea of where we are talking about, the shooting happened around the 1400 block of 18th Avenue South. That's in the area just south of downtown. The whole thing unfolding just after 415 this afternoon in the parking lot of a food mart. Our Emil Morrow is live tonight near the scene. Our Bo Zimmer also covering this for us. He is outside of Bayfront Hospital where one officer has been in surgery tonight, but we will start with Emerald, no, who's got the latest information from investigators. From what can you tell us? Yeah, uh, Carolina, you know, this all started when police were looking for a man on child abuse charges. And according to the sheriff, they say that police in St. Petersburg were looking for 20 year old Dominique Harris. They say he faced felony charges for body slamming a 15 year old during a fight. Now, according to the sheriff as well, police found Harris along 18th Avenue South outside of the food max. They tried to get him out of the car. And when he refused, the sheriff says police broke the windshield. It was then that Harris allegedly backed up into the cruiser behind him and then tried to speed off, but officers surrounded him. That is when the sheriff says Harris pulled out a semi-automatic weapon and shot a detective in the lower body. From there, a witness at the scene says everything turned chaotic with dozens of shots fired. Another witness says Harris's younger brother came out of the Food Max store to find his brother dying. I can hear his brother, he behind me. He's screaming and he's hollering. Well, that's my brother, y'all. Other officers uh, continued to fire because Harris continued to be a threat. He continued to point his firearm at the officers and was continuing to fire. Now, the thing to remember here is that this is an active investigation, and the sheriff reiterate, reiterated several times that, you know, the information may change depending on the evidence and the videos that they watch. So this is something we will continue to monitor, and we'll update you as soon as we have more. And we will continue to follow those updates. I do want to get now to Bo Zimmer, who is outside of Bayfront Hospital tonight with a very active scene there as well. Bo, what is the latest where you are? Well, Carolina, I can tell you I've covered a number of these police shootings over the years here in the Tampa Bay area, and I can tell you this was a very emotionally charged night here at the hospital. We are, of course, at Bayfront Health uh, near downtown St. Petersburg, and you had both uh, friends and family members of the wounded officer, but also of that wounded suspect all here together waiting to find out what was happening. At one entrance, a law enforcement family gathers to show support for a wounded officer. At the opposite entrance, the grandmother and loved ones of the 20 year old shot by police. No one has said anything to us. What we just want to know what his condition is. Around 830, Pinellas Sheriff Bob Galtieri arrived to brief waiting family members in person. It's important uh, that Harris's family get information. Uh, they get it firsthand. He would share the news many here already feared that 20 year old Dominique Harris was dead. I went through uh, with them what we know, uh, explained it to them. Uh, showed them a photograph uh, of the gun uh, with the shell casing there uh, so that they can understand uh, what the physical evidence is and, and it hopefully um, provides some, uh, I guess, context. Tears, disbelief, and lots of unanswered questions. A uh, family in that situation is one of the greatest voids for them is not knowing why he did what he did. Sheriff Galtieri says the wounded officer is still in surgery. The sheriff says Harris shot the officer in the groin, the gun just a foot away. The officer is expected to recover. Forensics teams also here on scene photographing a police cruiser and bringing bags of potential evidence out of the emergency room. As we are trying to figure out exactly what happened, they only not only want to know what happened, but why. And back out here live, uh, still a number of police officers streaming in and out of the hospital tonight, but nothing like what we saw earlier as this officer uh, was arriving here and there was a lot of concern about if he was going to be OK or not. We understand he is doing uh, OK and is expected to uh, recover from all of this, but uh, certainly some scary moments out here at the hospital. And of course, we will keep you updated when we get a final update on his condition. Guys.
Bo, thank you. And really that whole area just south of the hospital there in downtown St. Pete has already been struggling for weeks to stop the violence in their neighborhoods. We've been telling you about it since really the middle of last month, November 14th. That part of town since that day has seen five different shootings. Tonight's happening right there next to the first from 18 days ago. The community has held walks to try and slow down the violence. And it's a story that our Emerald Morrow has been telling you about. So I want to bring her back in here. And Emerald, leaders in South St. Pete, they have made it their new mission. It's their new rallying cry, too, that enough is enough. Yeah, that is absolutely right, Ryan. You know, there is just, uh, there are so many layers to the violence that's happening in this community. And up to this point, we've seen what's really called interpersonal violence. So that's violence happening among people who tend to know each other. But this one, community members are saying, kind of starts to toe that line between that strained relationship between the community and police officers. And, you know, what's really happening now is they're saying we've got to come together and deal with this issue. So I want you to take a look at this video. This is from when... Uh, the community started really coming together over the last few weeks to pray, march, and get to the root causes of the violence spiking in South St. Pete. And leaders say, quite frankly, the community really needs to step up and keep working to mend those broken relationships among each other and among law enforcement. Otherwise, the bloodshed continues. It's got to stop, you know. I feel like we're out here every week with another um, shooting, another victim to gun violence. There has, you know, historically been distrust amongst the community and law enforcement. And I think that, you know, Chief Holloway has been trying to do what he can to mend that. But yet and still, for whatever occurred out here, that's no excuse, right? Now, it's going to be a while before we have complete answers about what happened out here tonight, but leaders say we cannot wait to start addressing this problem. There was already an anti-violence march planned for this weekend. The conversations are going to have to continue as we try to figure out what to do about this problem that is plaguing this community. And that is the key right there, Emerald, those conversations that need to be had. So this story is going to continue to develop over the next hours and days. Investigators are expecting to have an update at the latest by tomorrow morning. Our team is asking for more information and working to get a clearer picture of what exactly happened this afternoon. As we get more answers, we will post them immediately on our 10 Tampa Bay app.